Hello everyone, welcome back to Cause Streams TV, and it has been a week, we are now done, season 4, week 5, and we're moving on to week 6, we got a few things to talk about, I am officially addicted to MOP, the, the endorphin kick you get from just collecting bronze and getting mounts and getting gear and upgrading gems, it has been fantastic, I managed to do two things this week, for one, we got our Paladin up to level 70 finally. Woo! That was the first character we got up to 70. And then I sat down and went really hard Sunday night to get my Death Knight up to 70 as well. So I made a Dark Iron Dwarf Death Knight and that is now 70. Before we jump into any retail stuff, I'm going to focus on MOP a little bit because it has been a lot of fun. A couple things have happened in MOP that are kind of funny. So besides the fact that my DK has all of his rings, I did the achievements that were required to to get the amulet, the ring, and the two rings. And it's funny because I was doing these raids in uh, heroic difficulty, thinking that that is what this achievement required. And it turns out that is not the case at all. All I needed to do is complete the raids in normal, but the dungeons and scenarios did have to be heroic, which we were able to do. So I was trying to get into heroic raids, and funny enough, I managed to get into a Throne of Thunder heroic, and I honestly have no idea why these people brought me with them. Everyone in the group was over 400 item level. I think my DK at the time was only 260 something. He's still missing his ring, he's still missing his neck, and he's still missing a trinket. But I got taken to this run at such a low item level, and midway through the run I was told, Hey, DK, don't taunt off the tank. So I was like, okay, aye aye, no problem. And of course at times I would rip aggro off accidentally, and I have no idea how this would happen, whether he got bopped or, or what. But the boss would turn to me and smack me, and I was trying as hard as I possibly could to stay alive, but it was not happening. So throughout the entire raid, as we were going through it, I kept getting smacked by the boss. I'd go to 100 to 0, and there's in Purgatory, I'd try to heal, I'd get back, and then suddenly I'm dead again. So every single boss, I think I survived uh, Jikun. The bird and one other boss the entire raid. Every other time, I was dead, and I was carried. I have no idea why they brought me, but I was grateful. I was very grateful at the end of the run. It was smooth, but the funny thing is, the druid and the rogue basically soloed most of the fights. I couldn't believe it. The druid was doing more healing and damage, and this is a bear druid. He was doing more healing and damage than anyone else in the raid, even our healers. So I I inspected him, I took a look at what he was running, and I just I couldn't believe it. He was definitely 450 plus. It was incredible, but yeah, I was I was grateful to kind of get dragged along. Literally as it was, because I just kept dying. Every single boss, I'd be laying on the floor. So that after we finished the Throne of Thunder run, I went on and did a Siege of Orgrimmar normal, not expecting the achievement to actually count. So the cool thing is for the raids, you just need to do them in normal. So I was really excited. I did the raid in normal. I ended up getting uh, my final piece. So now I have on my DK, I have my neck, my trinket, my rings, everything set up. Uh, my gems are upgraded. Uh, I really just want to play more mop remix. I did go on retail. I did do a key on my DK just to get a key on him. It was an eight. We'll take a look at the vault for that later. And I did do a uh, mythic raid on my monk plus one twelve. But we'll take a look at that later. Yeah, but in regards to mop, it was a lot of fun. The DK feels very powerful compared to my paladin. Leveling the DK was a breeze. It took about eight to nine hours, maybe a little less. But I did mainly dungeons and some quests and the raids. That's it. I really, it was minimal, minimal questing as well, right? So it, it felt really good. I'm going to continue to push on the DK. I really enjoy playing. Obviously, I know Blood well, so I'm going to keep playing Blood. I'm going to keep pushing some raids and content, and that you should see some more of that throughout the week. Um, so something that happened in Mopa, I was running Siege of Orgrimmar. There was this really cool nostalgic feeling. Uh, Siege of Orgrimmar was actually when I started to kind of connect with people in, in WoW. Uh, and we started actually running weekly raids. It started with me and one other person, a warrior, and I was a DK. And then we kind of expanded that. And every week, that was before looking for group was a thing. And you had an add-on that actually let you uh, join groups that others were creating through the add-on. 
that's how looking for group came about and during this time it was really cool because that's when i started to start raid leading and learning fights learning about bosses learning about mechanics like really getting into it and that actually eventually led to me forming my first guild there's about you know 10 of us that we formed a guild and going into warlords of drainer i actually started raid leading and we did we were very successful as a guild early on and it was really a cool experience to have that nostalgic feeling come back while i'm doing siege of orgrimmar and just thinking like this is what really started really expanding my horizons in the game and bringing me into a more competitive zone of doing raiding at a higher level doing those heroic raids which eventually at the end of siege of Org uh, at the end of mist of pandaria became mythic raids and that led into Warlords of Draenor, which then led into future expansions. And since then, like, I've been a raid lead and a GM for a long time, but this is the first expansion in Dragonflight. I've stepped away, but that feeling and that, you know, remembering that from so many years ago was really, really cool. So I just thought I'd share that because, like, that's... I think that's something that you may not get from other games. Like, what other games have lasted this long where you can get that experience? I think it's a neat experience to have that nostalgia and be in that same spot so i'm gonna post a little link up above it's actually to the first time i solo tank garage on the blood decay that i still play today so the one that i opened vault with uh, later on that is the same blood decay that solo garage back when mr pandaria was live and i remember when i did this i was so excited because i finally soloed garage by myself with the guild Take a look at that video it's really cool the song that plays in the background is actually an original that i wrote so yeah check out the link let me know what you think there'll be a info card up above and it'll be down in the description and yeah it was just it was really cool to experience that as i'm going through siege of ogramar and it didn't even feel like it was taking forever it just it felt really cool to go through that raid again and experience it in that way And before we switch gears, I want to show you guys this. I ended up buying a ton. Uh, and I mean a ton of mounts from Mop Remix. There is 22, 23, 20. We got 26 mounts here. And I also bought two other ones before this started, the 38k ones. We've got the Corcoran Juggernaut, so I no longer have to farm Siege of Orgrimmar. And then we also got... The Elegon mount, the Astral Serpent, so we also have that. I no longer have to farm Mogashan Vaults on retail. And then I bought a whole bunch of other ones. I've been using my bronze right now. I'm going to get all of the mounts first, and then I'm going to focus on upgrading my gear. Right. And I'm going to get some of the transmogs as well. But yeah, so I got all of the ostrich looking like ones. So everything that was 2200 bronze, I got. I got some of the, the flying mount here, the, the Petrodaxes. We got the other two color variations of the Juggernaut. We got the three flying discs. We've got the Dire Horn. Both Dire Horns, I believe. We've got the other Cloud Serpent. Reigns of the Onyx Cloud Serpent. Got that as well. And then we got a couple of the goats. There are the two Blood Screamers I got. Three, technically. And then we got some of the Yaks. The color the different color variations and then i ran out of bronze when i got the tiger so my plan is to buy the remaining ones so we managed to get to here we've got all everything for 4400 out of bronze the plan for this week will be to get the remaining mounts that i need that are 6600 these are all unique to the panda remix so i've just got the 6600 mounts left and then all of these or some of these i have so this one i already have the dire horn we got to get the other color variation of the dire horn all right so the other two color vari variants and then all of the ones that are 3800 i already purchased all right so i already have this it's in my bag i just haven't activated yet so we're going to do that right now but i've got all of these mounts now so let's kick in how many mounts are we looking at right now we've got 371 mounts and after this Oh, there is a cooldown on this? Oh my god. I wonder if we can speed this up somehow. I'm going to try to speed up the video so you guys don't have to see this, but... So, we just got the achievement. No stable big enough, giving us a brand new mount. So, this is the mount that we just got from no stable big enough. For 350 mounts. So that puts us up to 398 mounts now. And let's shift into retail. 
let's take a look at the monk. We did Mythic Raid. Uh, we got up to Sark. We did get a few pulls on Mythic Sark. It wasn't very successful, but we did give it a try. Uh, we just, I think most of the raid has never actually seen Mythic Sark. I haven't, for example. Uh, so we did give that a try. We did a couple pulls on it. It was all right. The, the raid overall was actually pretty smooth. We ended up blasting through most of the bosses. And funny enough, Magmarax was the one that gave us the hardest time. Everything before Magmarax, we one or two shot. And then we get to Magmarax and we spent about 30 to 30, 30 to 40 minutes on that boss. It was, it was mind blowing that that was the boss that gave us the challenge. And it does not have a lot of mechanics. But we got through it. Uh, we ended up. I ended up coming back online and doing a ruby life pool with the with a couple team members. It was a. We, it was a thirteen and ended up getting dropped down to a twelve. Just we didn't have a good beginning. We did end up timing the twelve. It wasn't very clean, so I'm not going to post the video on YouTube. But we do have uh, some IO increases. Uh, no gear upgrades this week. Taking a quick gander at the gear. No real upgrades. We just did some minor uh, gear upgrading for things that I could max out. Um, I'm still running a 489 ring, so I'm still hoping to get something. Maybe tonight out of a Mirdrasil I can get a Gira's ring. I should also be able to buy one from Boolean. I can use the fillet, the uh, fillet of duty. So that is the other ring I'd like to buy. Um, in terms of IO, as promised, we did hit... 2753, we're at 2715, and this is just from that 112 ruby. I think I had a failed 8 or 9, it was a low key. So just that one key got us up to 2753. Uh, because of Rop Mop Remix, it's very hard to get on and push keys right now on retail, and my teammates are currently gone on vacation. I'm hoping to get that up a little bit, but I'm making no promises. Mop Remix for life. Let's open the vault as Windwalker and see what we get. So three Mythic Vault slots and one Mythic Dungeon slot. Alright, so we've got an upgrade to our legs. we got the Mythic Track Tier Legs, which is really good. Ooh, we got the Bandolier, which is a huge DPS increase, especially in AoE pulls. This is actually a really good trinket, and it's Mythic Track. Would I get it from Agira tonight? It might be worth waiting. We got a Mythic Track chest, what I don't need, and then we also have a Mythic Track back piece, Crit Mastery, which is really good. If I'm doing lower keys, this would be a very fun trinket to have. It does a lot of damage. And then this back piece is just very good because of the Crit Mastery. Much better than what I have now. So take a quick look at what others may be running. Um, because Awaken's coming through, and this may drop pretty often, or I can get it with a Boolean, I think I'm going to take this cape. This is one of the better statted capes. Higher in Mastery, which is fine. My crit is currently 35%. Mastery 29, Verse. There's only... The better option would be a crit Verse back piece from somewhere. But, like, the haste on this is just useless. So for now, I am going to take this cape. That brings us up to exactly 522. I'll enchant it just before raid. But you know what? Let's go do it now. And next up we have the DK. I'm not really going to go over him much. Like I said, I only ran one key uh, just to have a mythic track piece. We're going to open his vault as unholy. Let's take a look at what we get. Not really helpful for us, so we're going to take the sockets. So this week, the plan is going to be to run through raid with the guild. We're going Awaken to Mudrasil this week. This should be the last week of individual Awaken raids, and then we can go fully into, uh, like, go pick whatever Awaken raid we want. I have a couple of ideas for videos I want to make for you guys. The challenge right now is that I need footage for boss fights, and since we're going to be doing the mythic version of these bosses, I'm wondering if I wait to get some of that footage, because it will actually help with the idea I have. Uh, but we'll see. If I don't really want to wait too long, so because the footage I need of, is just of some of the last bosses, I may just kind of skip that and start working on the video now. You have to come back to see what the video is about. I'll work on the video this week and the goal would be to get it out for you guys on the week. It will take a little bit of time, so that's something I'm gonna focus on. Uh, outside of that, realistically, so I made a Dwarf Priest and a Dwarf 
uh, Warlock on Pandemics because I'm trying to force myself to play DPS classes because all I ever do is tank. I started this the DK in MOP as a Frost DK. It didn't last long when queues were taking more than a minute, so I swapped to Blood DK and that's where I've kind of stuck with it. So I'm going to most likely level those up to 70 throughout the week. I'm really enjoying it. I should have all of the, mo uh, the mounts that I need. And then after I have the mounts, I can start working on some of the transmogs and upgrading my DK's gear. Just, just go in there and blast. It is a lot of fun, right? So I want to get some of the achievements. That's stuff I'll be working on this week after raid or outside of raid. The My team is currently gone, so I don't plan on doing too much Mythic Plus. I will do what is required for the week, of course. Most likely one or two, one to four on the Monk and one to four on the DK. Really depends on how sick I get of Mop Remix. I don't see that happening anytime soon because it is a lot of fun. So that's the plan for this week. I really hope that you guys have ha are having a blast in Mop Remix or in retail or whatever it is you enjoy doing. I know I am. Good luck in your vaults this week. Let me know how, how your week's been going, what's new and exciting. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.